Tell me how ministry develops then in Mozambique. Fantastic. We really, we've, uh, I could only plant in my own life, I could only plant around 25 churches in the whole of Mozambique in my nearly 20 years there. I struggled. And I think all my gray hair comes from planting churches because you, be, <laughs> you, be, I think you become the father of those, you know, yeah. those wonderful people. And I didn't want that. I wanted churches to be strong, sustainable, run themselves, believe in what they do. And I struggled. And then I met Harvesters. They, this, this was a great church planting movement that came on my way. And they said, there is a better way. And I thought, I've read all the books uh, on church planting. Robert Wagner, you name them. Uh, all of the, the wonderful American writers that wrote on church planting. But it just didn't struck a chord and didn't work for me on the field. Then I met Harvesters and they said to me, okay, we want to train you, teach you in a specific methodology on how to do this. And I thought, oh my goodness, so uh, <coughs> let me take 10 of my most trusted and valuable men on the field, Mozambicans, that we led to Christ during that time. And they started and suddenly, within nine months, we had 85 churches. That grew to 125, that grew to 300, to 400. I didn't believe it because I was very busy. I was on my motorbike, driving just simply everywhere to see, is this even possible? <coughs> and sure enough, there was a community of faith. There were people saved and they started a church. And I think the problem in Mozambique was we love all the outreach groups that come from all around the globe, from the U.S. and from wherever in the world, the U.K. and from South Africa. And they make all these wonderful disciples, but then they just leave them. Yeah. And they just, they just sit, still sit under the tree and the same guy would be, same guy would be saved next year, again with an outreach team, with a Jesus film, or what they would do. And we realized these people you know, need a place. They need a place where they can come together and grow in their faith, become a disciple that would make other disciples. Yeah, and, and the, the transformation of grace is a process, not an event. And, and you can't blow in and, and then leave because that, that, that whole process of long-term transformation, that's what the church is about. And absolutely. If uh, all of this is process and the moment we put churches together and they realize, well, this is not just you know, a quick uh, flash event and, and then life goes on. It is truly a long walk with it's a marathon. It's not a sprint race. That's right. And uh, once we start investing into those beautiful people uh, in a church context, that's why church is crucial. And I think we have misunderstanding. Uh, all around the globe, misunderstandings of what the church really so, is. So I want you to talk about that. Oh. When you say the church is crucial, what do you mean? The word koinonia and all these beautiful words that people, you know, uh, use when they talk about the church. I think in the Western world, we have a totally misunderstanding of what church is. I think sometimes we think really church starts because there's, uh, an entity, a specific church and an entity, and we would love to join them. That makes church for a lot of people. Or it's the personality of the pastor. Yeah. You know, his great identity or personality brings people into the church. Or it's the great building that brings people into the church. It could be a budget. It could be, it could be so many things. And people would say, or programs even, you know, yeah. we've got a great uh, teenage movement here. Let's join. And that is not church at all. Um, church truly for us, we believe that church is simply, simply a place where God is loved, where we love people and where we make disciples. And that Christ is absolutely in the center of the church. He's the leader of the church, uh, not the pastor, not the program, not the building, but simply Jesus Christ. 